Okay, so I think we should start the lecture. Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have studied the uh, special moment testing frame requirements for beams and columns, similarly for lab slices. So uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss some requirements for the giant soft special moment testing frame. And after that, we will solve a design example on this, okay? So giants of special moment testing frames. <clears throat> Uh, giants in a special moment resting frame plays a very important role because uh, the moments from one bay to another bay or from one story to another story is transferred through these giants. So if the giant fails, the whole moment resting frame action will, will be jeopardized. Okay. So it is basically the portion of connection, beam column connection, and which is basically part of the column, common between beam and column. You can see here, this is basically the giant. And this whole system, which is uh, almost two inch from this side, to each from the left side in the beam, each top of the column and each bottom of the column. This hole is known as uh, connection, is very important. So these giants and connections must be specially detailed because it is part of the special moment testing frame. So these must be specially detailed so that uh, these must be strong and stiff enough to transfer the moment from one bay to another bay, from one story to another story. And uh, these must be uh, ductile and tough, <coughs> must have adequate toughness and ductility so that uh, it can su successfully <coughs> release the energy imparted to these giants. Uh, uh, imported by the earthquake reversals, okay? <clears throat> so these giants must be <clears throat> specially detailed. You can see in the picture, this is the exterior giant, <clears throat> just conducted on full-scale exterior giant, and you can see the damage uh, in the giant uh, because these giants have not been properly detailed. <clears throat> no closely spaced ties were provided. And the size of the column uh, is also not enough <coughs> sufficient. Similarly, there's another picture. You can see this is an interior giant. <coughs> and you can see the cracks on the face of the column. So there is basically slip of the negative bars. And due to that slip, a crack will appear. Yeah. And how to uh, stop or how to prevent these cracks? For this, you have to fulfill the requirement of special moment testing frame. <clears throat> these are the requirements. The first requirement is Successful seismic design of frames require that the structures be proportioned so that hinges occur at locations that least compromise strength. Okay. So, for example, if there uh, is a hinge or damage, crack or yielding in the beam, so it will be a localized failure and there must be redistribution of these moments to other beams. So that is why we allow hinges or damage in the beams, but we will not allow the hinges or uh, steel yielding cracks, etc., in the column <coughs> or even the giant, because giant is basically part of the column. <coughs> so this approach is known as weak beam 
and strong column approach. <coughs> so after you design the beam and column, you must detail, you must provide reinforcement in beam and column such that the column flexure capacity is 1.2 times the beam flexure capacity, total flexure capacity. Okay. <coughs> Now, since uh, the <clears throat> giant, as I told you, is part of the column, therefore, column ties with 135 degree hook to be continued through the giant. So, column ties must be continued because you can see if this is the giant, there is a possibility that you continue the stirrups of beam within the giant, but it is not allowed. You have to continue the column ties within the giant because it is part of the column basically. <coughs> this is an interior giant you can see here. <coughs> Total flexure capacity at the giant <coughs> of beam is uh, <coughs> nominal capacity of beam on the right side and nominal capacity of beam on the left side. You have to add these two to determine the total flexure capacity. And then total flexure capacity of the column you can see here. And this you can uh, calculate from the interaction diagram. You must determine first of all the axial load on this giant. And from corresponding to that load, you must uh, determine the flexure capacity of column from the interaction diagram. And if you add these two, that is total column flexure capacity, it must be greater than or equal to 1.2 or 6 divided by 5 of total flexure capacity of the <clears throat> Otherwise, the hinges will form in column, and if the column fails, so there is a possibility that it may lead to a global failure of the building even <clears throat> in some cases. <clears throat> okay, this is another requirement. <clears throat> to prevent beam column giant cracking, SEI code requires that the column dimension parallel to the beam reinforcement must be at least 20 times the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar. So, if for example, you are using number 8 bar in the beam as flexure reinforcement. So, 20 multiplied by die of number 8 bar, which is 1 inch. So, 20 inch column at least you will need. You are using number 8 bar in the beam. So, this size. Uh, basically depends on these requirements normally in most of the cases because uh, for example from the demand point of view uh, here 12 inch by 12 inch column will be sufficient but from the development length point of view or from these requirements keeping in view these requirements you will need at least 20 inch column <coughs> to prevent the giant cracking okay Similarly, if there is exterior giant, <clears throat> so you must develop the bars of beam within the giant by providing LDH, that is development link with hook. You already have studied this these requirements in the RCD1 lecture 5. Here you can see the development length will be minimum, uh, maximum of these three requirements, 8 dB, 6 inches, or this equation. This equation you studied in the RCD1 course, okay? F Y D will be 65 under root C prime. <clears throat> so maximum of these three will be your minimum development length with hook for the exterior giant, okay? And from this, you can determine the size because you will add this with the, this length, uh, one bar dia plus cover. This will give you the total size of the column. So sometimes these requirements will dictate the size of columns and beams, okay? Now, SCI provision for intermediate moment resting frames. <coughs> As I told you, that in moderate seismic risk zone, 
the you can provide the IMRF <coughs> frames. So provision for first of all we'll discuss provision for plug members size. So no special requirement on size. Plug reinforcement less stringent requirement, and you will see on the next slide that how the uh, requirements have been relaxed for the IMRF system. Transverse reinforcement same as SMRF. So the requirement on transverse reinforcement for IMRF is same as for the SMRF. And for lab, there is no special requirement, just as for ordinary beam. So what is <clears throat> the difference? The difference is the uh, requirement on the flux reinforcement. So these are the requirements you can see. <coughs> so you will determine the maximum reinforcement corresponding to uh, strain of 0.004. And the minimum reinforcement requirement remains the same. And you know that these will be applied on critical location. Critical location means negative reinforcement, negative and po positive reinforcement at joint, and <coughs> positive reinforcement at mid location of PP. These are the critical locations, OK? Now, the positive reinforcement at joint must be at least negative reinforcement provided at the joint divided by three. So this has been relaxed for IMRF because uh, for I SMRF, it, it was equal to negative reinforcement divided by two. So if, for example, there is 12 number six bars <coughs> as top reinforcement at the joint, so as per SMRF, you must provide at least six number six bars in the bottom but if you are using i marif so then 12 divided by 3 4 so in case of our i marif you need four number six bar <coughs> to be continued in the giant the bottom okay similarly there was another requirement if you remember that reinforcement at all sections must be equal to maximum reinforcement negative or positive at the joint divided by four if you remember in case of smrf but in case of imrf it is <coughs> maximum reinforcement divided by five so for example if you have negative reinforcement maximum 10 number six bars so as per smrf you will need 10 divided by four which is 2.5 so almost three number six bars will be continued at all sections. But in case of IMRF, 10 divided by five, so you need only two bars to be continued at all location. And two bars will be required <coughs> whether it is IMRF, OMRF, or SMRF, just to hold the reinforcement. What the requirement is, see? Clear? Any question? Any question? No, sir. OK. Now, provision for columns <coughs> of IMRF. Here, you size, no special requirement. Now, in case of column, there is no special requirement on luxury reinforcement. And there will be less stringent requirement on transverse reinforcement, unlike the flexor member, that is beam. Beam ke case mein, agar aap dekhe, <coughs> to us case mein bilkul different tha. There was less stringent requirement on the flexor reinforcement and no special requirement on transverse reinforcement. But in case of column, there is no special requirement on flexor reinforcement and less stringent requirement on the transverse reinforcement and you will see on the next slide that how the uh, requirements have been relaxed for IMRF. Lab carry away no special requirement. <coughs> you can see that in the L naught region there are different equations used 8 into smallest 
longitudinal bar dia 24 into uh, dia of tie bars 0.5 into minimum of h1 or h2 and 12 inch whichever is minimum we will for example 3 inch is the minimum <coughs> from this requirement from this requirement 6 inch is minimum okay you might have studied it in the previous class and in case of left slice for example minimum is coming 4 inch so what do you do? Just you will select the minimum from minimum select karenge, 3 inch and you will provide this throughout the column ok we will different spacing of the denge because we will not <coughs> compromise on the strength of the column us mein ghalti ke chances kafi zyada honge sahi As you know that IMRF are not allowed in high seismic zones, however SMRF are allowed in moderate seismic zones. So it will be clear that IMRF are not allowed for example in seismic zone 3 and 4. Okay, in seismic zone 3 and 4 you must provide SMRF. But you can also provide SMRF in seismic zone 2B and 2A. Okay. Two-way slip system as I told you. It is not allowed to a slave system without being that is plate plate or plate slave system. They are not allowed in high seismic zones, that is zone two, zone three, and zone four. Okay. <coughs> this is example. Design example. read A two-dimensional frame of the building is shown in figure one. <coughs> All beams in the frame are 12 inch wide and 18 inch deep. That is 12 inch by 18 inch beam. All columns are 12 inch square. It is required only for frame B, F, G, C. How we extract the, this frame from the actual building. This is the actual building. The idealization. And we will extract only this front frame from the building and this building have already been designed okay the enforcement is given these are the uh, designed enforcement <coughs> it has already been designed what is required for this frame you have probably one by one Number one, provide suitable number of bars in beams and columns for which flux reinforcement is shown in the figure. Reality design hai, reinforcement given hai, just up number of bars calculate kare. Flux reinforcement ke liye number five bar use kare. Or transverse reinforcement ke liye number three bars. Flux reinforcement, transverse reinforcement dono given hai. <coughs> Wahan se aap select kar sakte hai, Provide suitable spacing for stirrups and ties when shear reinforcement as per design is 0.23 inch square per foot so you already given it in all pa part of the frames then third you will satisfy all smrf requirements for beams and columns so when you number of bar decide you will be detailing then you will apply the smrf checks present appropriately proportioned structural detail of beam and column also draw the beam column joint detail at detail X as shown in figure 1. Take FC prime 3 and FY 40 case. Here This is the actual building. Idealization of the frame. Frame extracted from the building. And the reinforcement, flux reinforcement is given. <clears throat> so what you will do first of all, you will calculate the number of bars for number 5 bar for beams as well as for column, okay? <clears throat> first of all, we will apply the minimum and maximum reinforcement check on critical locations. So minimum reinforcement is, you know, 0 0.005 into BD. It is coming 0.9 in square. 
So all the design enforcement you can see here it is greater than 0.9 square. So it is okay. Maximum reinforcement is 2.5 percent of BD. It is coming 4.5 in square, and the maximum reinforcement here you can see it is 3 in square. It is also satisfied. Now negative reinforcement at the ends and positive reinforcement at the mid span must be greater than is minimum and and less than is maximum. This is okay for the values on the given beam. For the column, we have <coughs> minimum reinforcement that is one percent of the grass cross section area. So that is coming 1.44, and the values given here is 3.2 in square. So it means that it is also satisfied. Okay. And in this given frame, you have to apply these checks only on BFGC frame. You can see the frame here. <coughs> Now uh, we will select the number of bars for number five bar. Negative reinforcement at joint, you can see three divided by point three one, so nine point six seven. Almost ten number five bars will be given in two layers. Take ten bars at joint for beam HG. Pass two bars at mid span. So pass two reinforcement maximum is one point eight in square divided by point three one, so five point eight. So almost six bars in two layers will be given in the mid. Pass two bars at joint, 1.2 divided by 0.31, 3.87. So almost four bars will be given in one layer. Okay. <coughs> so, this key detailing is that you will have met for your four plus two bars. Will be a total six bars, and in two bars, you will have to tell at the joint. So at the joint, you will have only four bars. Okay. Column reinforcement three point two divided by point three one, ten point three two. So you will provide twelve number five bars, <coughs> evenly distributed on all faces of the column. So this is the. Number of bars marked on each frame member. Okay, five plus five, number five bar. Four plus two, number five bar. Twelve, number five bar. The card. Next, we will <coughs> provide shear reinforcement. We will calculate the spacing for number three bar. Okay, so shear reinforcement is already given. Point two three inch square per foot. Area of bar divided by design enforcement multiplied by twelve will give you the spacing. So area of bar in this case is point two two in square. Point two two divided by point two three multiplied by twelve is given eleven point four seven in spacing. Okay. Now minimum spacing check. Up as per apply. करेंगे. So these are the four equations you might <coughs> might remember. A V F Y divided by 50 B W D by 2 24 inch and A V F Y divided by 0.75 is prime B W. So the minimum spacing is selected, which is 0.5 inch center to center. Tie spacing for column is again the same because the shear reinforcement is same. And for that minimum spacing is from these three equation. So minimum spacing for the column is 10 inch. This is just we calculated the spacing from the ACI requirement, and we have not applied SMRF checks <coughs> at this stage. So, आगे हम इस पर SMRF checks भी apply करेंगे. Okay. So, in beam we will provide uh, stereo spacing number three at seven point five inch, and in column the stereo spacing is number three at ten inch. You can see this is the shear reinforcement detailing. Okay. Now 
we start from the uh, SMRF torsion for beams. <coughs> so we will first of all sell, uh, check the sizes in which the first requirement is ln by d should be greater than 4. ln is 15 feet. Okay. Divide by d. d is 15 inch. So 15 by 12, it will multiply with 15. So it is coming 12 in, uh, 12, uh, the value is 12, which is greater than 4, so satisfied. Okay. Why ln by d should be greater than 4? Because if it is coming less than 4, it means that it is a deep beam in, in which the failure mode will be predominantly a shear failure mode it will not be a flexor failure mode okay so which is not <coughs> uh, suitable for the moment resting frames okay width divided by total depth that is 12 divided by 18 it should be greater than 0.3 <coughs> it is coming 0 0.67 so it is also satisfied and minimum width for beam should be greater than 10 inch in our case, it is 12 inch, so it is also satisfied. <coughs> Coming to, <coughs> to flux reinforcement. <coughs> so in flux reinforcement, first of all, you will check that the positive reinforcement given at the joint must be at least half of the negative reinforcement provided at the joint. So, negative reinforcement provided is 10 number 5 10 divided by 2 is coming 5 number 5 and we have provided 4 number 5 so what is the solution we cannot provide straightforward here 5 number 5 bars but the solution is that we will not curtail the those two bars in the second layer we will also continue those bars in the chain so 6 number 6 bar will be continued with, with, uh, within the joint and as per SMRF you must at least <coughs> continue 5 number 5 bars so it will be satisfied okay you can see here 4 plus 2 bars in the mid and 4 plus 2 bar in the joint as well <coughs> there is another requirement that uh, maximum reinforcement in beam divided by 4 must be continued everywhere. So 10 divided by 4, which is 2.5. So almost 3 number 5 bars must be continued everywhere. You can see here 3 number 5 bars are continued. It is not required from the demand point of view here because you need only 2 number 5 bars just to hold the stirrup here. That there is no tensile stresses here at the top mid location but uh, due to SMRF requirements we will provide 3 number 5 bar so you can see we will curtail these bars sorry These bars will be curtailed. Second layer and two bars in the first will be curtailed here, and three number five will be continued in the top. Any question? Clear? Yes, sir. Now coming to the transverse reinforcement. <clears throat> so you know that up to 2H reach, uh, region, 
we will provide minimum of this spacing. One is D by four, which is coming 3.75 inch, eight into smallest longitudinal bar dia, which is coming five inch, nine inch and 12 inch. So the least of all these will be provided in the two inch region, which is 3.75 inch. So in this region, you will provide at least 3.75 inch spacing. And first step will start at two inch from the face of the column. Elsewhere, you can provide uh, S is equal to D by two, which is in this case is seven inch. Okay. And at the last slice location, minimum of D by four and four inch will be provided. So you can see in this case also 3.75 inch will be governing. What will be the length of layer slice? It will be 1.3 of development length. You can calculate development length from this equation. And you can directly take 50 into dia bar because for FC prime three and FY40, you already know that uh, the length will be equal to 50 into dia bar, okay? For FC prime three and grade 60 still, the left slice length will be equal to 70 into dia bar. <coughs> So it is coming 2.5 feet, okay? So this length will be equal to 2.5 feet and spacing provided at the layer slice will be number three at 3.75 inch center to center, if it is required. Coming to the provision for columns. So first of all, we will uh, Check the size of column. As per SMRF, you need at least 12 inch column. So we have also provided 12 inch square column. So it is satisfied. Flexure reinforcement. All columns are reinforced with 12 number 5 bars, which gives uh, this reinforcement 2.5%. And the range is 1% and 6%. So it lies within the range of minimum mixing reinforcement. It is okay. Transverse enforcement, we will calculate for these three regions. So first of all, we will calculate L0. L0 is equal to maximum larger column dimension, which is 12 inch. Clear length of the column divided by six, which is 18.5 inch and 18 inch. So maximum of these two is 18.5 inch. So within 18.5 inch, you will provide this much spacing. Smaller column dimension divided by four, which is coming three inches, and six into longitudinal bar dia, which is coming 3.75 inches. So it means that within the L0 region, you will need three inch spacing uh, of the ties, okay? <coughs> <coughs> spacing of reinforcement other than L0 region is six into longitudinal bar dia, which is again 3.75 inch and six inch. So in this case, the minimum is 3.75 inch. So other than L0 region, you will provide the spacing at the rate of 3.75 inch. And within the layer slice, you can see uh, it will be D by four or four inch minimum of these two. D in this case is 11.31. You can calculate exactly the value of D, okay, or the column, which is 12 minus, uh, Clear cover, which is 1.5 inch, and minus stirrup dia, minus half dia of the longitudinal bar. So that will give you the D. It's called confirm the current. So it is coming 2.82 inches. Now, if you see, uh, the minimum of all these three. That is within L0 region, it is three inch spacing. Other than L0 is 3.75. And for left slice region, it is giving you 2.82 inches. So what you will do, you will provide 2.82 inches uh, spacing through the column. Okay. Left slice length, the requirement will be of the XLT, it is coming 2.5 feet. Now, requirement for the size of giant 
it is 20 multiplied by 5 by 8, it is coming to 12.5 inch. And we have provided 12 inch size of column. Okay. So here you have to comment the change size of the column. Clear? Take column dimension pair to beam long, longitudinal bar at least 13.5 inches. Clear? So you can see that from demand point of view, the column size was sufficient. It was okay. It was working. But from the uh, dual and building point of view, or from the point, uh, the giant detailing point of view, to prevent the giant cracking, you need at least 12.5 inch size of the column. So in most of the cases, these requirements will basically dictate the size of column and beams, okay? <coughs> this is the detailing of giant, you can see here. <coughs> These bars are <coughs> 5 plus 5 number 10 and number 5 bars. These are 4 plus 2 number 5 bars in the bottom. And these are total 12 number 5 bars. Now solution of part D, which is basically uh, drafting, clear drafting of the presentation of appropriately proportioned structural details of beam, column, and selected giant. In this part, structural drawings showing all calculated SMRF details have been asked to draw. This has already been done in part C along with each member beam and column SMRF checks. However, in the examination, it is better to draw all drawings here in part D at the same place to avoid waste of time. So, just do the calculations and make a drawing in this So, it will basically save your time. <coughs> part D is shown next. You can see here, once again, YLDM cut to This is the final drafting of the B after applying the SMRF checks. Yeah, but I've noted that lay slice is provided only if required. If not required, you don't need to provide lay slice here. These are the uh, negative and positive. <coughs> Maximum enforcement sections you can see here. So 2.82 inches is almost equal to 3 inches. So you can see here we have provided number 3 at 3 inch throughout the column. Okay. L not region, slave length region. They have been clearly marked. <coughs> Although it is not required because you you are providing the same spacing throughout the column, but from academic point of view, you must mark these uh, regions. <coughs> this is the section of column, and this is the section at lab location. You will always. Uh, lay the bars inside the column, okay? Structural detail of giant, we have already dekh chuke. And these are the references. Now, if you have any question, you can ask the question. <coughs> any question? Is this clear to all of you? Yes, yes. sir. If there are any questions in this lecture, then you can ask me, Shabash. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Any questions so far in this lecture? Okay, so if you don't have any question, you can leave the class. And in the next class, we will start the uh, introduction to Pistis design, okay?